Happy Spookies, Emma Louise Webb. So glad to have you on Netflix. And Phil, how are you? Yeah, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm already loving this energy. You know, happy (laughs) Spookies. It is Halloween itself. You know, this is the perfect time to do this. Isn't it crazy? So it's one of my favorite holidays, and I'm so excited to have you on board. And uh, thank you for taking the time out today to meet with me. Um, I guess I'll start with this. Uh, what qualifies you to be on Netflix and Phil is that I discovered you are in an episode of The Crown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah which is wonderful so I happened to see um your episode the other day and uh you have a great line in it and there's a <laughs> word which I had to look up because I didn't know what it meant <laughs> dude neither did I I was sat there in my in my trailer that day and I was like what does this word mean <laughs> I had no time to learn it either so I was like just go with it pretend you know what it means I don't know what it meant so before we started recording you talked about a fitting and what I find very unique about that show and what's very amazing is the authenticity in the costumes what is it like uh being fitted for those or wearing them in your work it was funny actually because I when I went to the fitting for that they had this massive like warehouse of all these amazing costumes it was huge you know the crown like the budget is like insane so they had all these amazing clothes um and they, they they put me in as as background in the fitting because they were like oh you're not the actress are you I was like well I think I am and they were like oh no 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 so they put me in this like really frumpy like gray two-piece thing and I was like oh great so then it got to the day and then they put me in this really cute little dress and I was like oh this is more like it they put my hair in rollers and stuff so that was fun um but it's so cool. And actually, when you're on set and you see it all, because they had they hired out that bus and it was like a an old school bus. Right. And right. all the all the people in costume, it's like really weird. It's like you're actually back in time. Uh-huh. And then like you look over the street and you kind of see like the normal uh normal 21st century. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's so well, and I imagine, I guess wherever the location, they probably dress one side of it and then the other side is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they had people like looking in like crowd because it was not like a shopping center and I was like hi everyone <laughs> it's so cool though it's well like, it was a great cool. line and for our viewers the word was priggish <laughs> which again what's your interpretation of it Emma because I <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as I'm aware I, I when I googled it I think it, it's something about being a bit I guess it's similar to prude yes I think you're absolutely right so like I said I had to look it up and in it the scene uh there's a article that's written about the queen and uh the author calls her a priggish (laughs) schoolgirl. so it's a wonderful moment so check out uh season two of the crown episode five and you'll see Emma Louise something quickly to show you sure yeah go ahead which is just conveniently by my bed. My mum for that got me a little um a little Oscar. <laughs> oh, your mother's so sweet. Well, and I, says, oh, and it says the crowd, it has everything. Yeah. Your mother is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Series two, episode five, Emma Webb, the crown. <laughs> That's mom, amazing. Love your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great. Well, and and from that, I imagine, I know you work collectively uh, with a group that uh, premiered last year, uh, probably one of the most motivating (laughs) for me, a horror fan. Uh, It helped kind of uh, galvanize the horror community. And uh, the film you are in is called Host. And uh, for those who are not aware of it, it was created during the start of the pandemic last year. And you worked with an amazing creative team to create something that I think took everyone by surprise. Thank you so much, by the way. It's uh-huh. so it's so weird because it just happened so fast. And I guess I had a conversation with Jed, who was one of the writers. And I remember being like, no one's going to watch this film. Like, we just made this at home. Like, no one's going to even watch it. And then it just became this, like, thing that everyone in the world seemed to see, um, which was just inspiring in itself to think, you know, like, we literally had these iPhones strapped to the back of our laptops and we were just kind of improv all the dialogue. And mm-hmm. the fact that it actually anything happened with it is still so bizarre. Um 
but oh god it was so fun and I you know that very first lockdown it was I think we were all a bit you know internationally I think we were all a little bit like oh what's going on so it was a brilliant distraction um and it was just something fun to do because we were all so antsy and just like oh and just because we all we were all friends before we made the film so it was to be able to do that with your friends was just such a unique thing but also it was just weird because we were in the lockdown and we I mean on one of the first days they sent me this big metal briefcase with microphones and batteries and they were I was like what is this so like we kind of had to learn how to do all this stuff which was really fun but it was so hard like none of us I can I can imagine and we have seen some behind the scenes tidbits and I know there's one moment in there a couple of moments actually that you might be able to speak to now where um, again, for those of you that don't know or haven't seen the movie, uh, a seance is held on Zoom and uh, it goes awry. I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. So you had to create your own special effects in your your own place. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, again, it was it was kind of like just the group of us winging it. Um, and the moments with Haley, you know, where she's mm-hmm. on the chair and she's pulled right. back. That was before we even started filming anything Rob was kind of like okay we're making this film what can you guys do in your homes and he sent us this fishing wire and like I was practicing like making things drop and Hayley and her boyfriend Kieran were practicing like he was pulling her on the chair and sending it to Rob um and so it was kind of like we were just throwing these ideas in but it was just kind of like how can we do stuff from home and for me stunt wise I actually had a stunt double so I didn't actually fall out of my window (laughs) <laughs> I was reviewing that scene before we chatted, and um, and I guess that the question for me is: Haley had the ability to have someone at the home with her. Were you alone the whole time, or did you have anybody uh, with you during the shoot itself? Um, so I was at my mum's house, and my mum's here. <laughs> She's in her sixties, so she wasn't going to be pulling any chairs. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and my stepdad, and actually, for a while, you know the bit. I mean spoilers, but you know the bit with the uh, the blanket, right? In my room. So that was originally my stepdad coming in the room, and I was like throwing it on his head. And then, <laughs> <laughs> what a team player he is! I love your mom, and I love your stepdad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, they were as bored as I was. They were like, "Oh, film going on upstairs." What's that? <laughs> um, but uh, no, in, in the end, we had we have a mannequin in, in the house. I don't really know why we have it. It's like my mom's thing. Yeah, and so in the end, it was me pulling this mannequin in and like chucking the blanket over it and then having to take it back out the room. We did that like a hundred times and it was so annoying. (laughs) Yeah, it was one of them. So, and I know it was about a 12 week process. So did at any time uh, anyone you live with get kind of like uh, frustrated or impatient or were they just game the whole time for this? (laughs) It's funny you say that. Like at the beginning, I think everyone was like, "Oh yeah, we'll accommodate for it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like by by the end of the shoot, because we were only actually filming for about two weeks, my mom was like, "We're trying to go to bed." And the thing with it was because it was so much screaming as well. Like there was a bit where Rob kind of left us to our own devices and said, "Okay, I need you to film this bit." And so the problem with me was I was like, I'm going to, I mean, I'm just going to do so many takes. And so I probably did like a hundred takes. It was just a tiny bit of me like falling on the floor and then coming back up. And I did it so many times. I'm like, there's a bit where I run to my bed and my mom was asleep in her room. And I was like running around. like. (laughs) (laughs) Your poor mom. You should give her an Oscar for (laughs) her participation as well. She got her name in in the credits so that oh that's funny. i was gonna ask did your stepdad and mom get their names yeah. in there? So, they well, did. That, that's they did. wonderful i know you've and you mentioned rob savage the director and you mentioned uh jed and also Gemma hurley who worked on this project host together and a team of actors and actresses um that are also working on a couple of new projects and I know that you can't uh, really probably speak to them in detail but I know you recently premiered uh, a film called Dash Cam there at the London Film Festival and you're in that, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. And you probably can't talk about it because... <laughs> <laughs> but I will say hmm. there's some really, really fun cameos in it and it's one that has to be watched in the cinema. I don't think it's got a cinema release yet but you absolutely have to watch it in the theatres because it's a wild ride. 
Well, and that's the feedback I'm getting because uh, what little I do know from uh, individuals have uh, who have reviewed it, they say it's a great uh, thing to see in person, a great project to see in person with an audience because it is a wild ride, as you said, Emma. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, early part of next year, you're working on something titled Ghosts. And is there anything that you can share about that project? Yeah, I think we're we're allowed to actually talk about that. <laughs> okay, and that's and it. And if you're unsure, you don't have to. But <laughs> no. So, Ghost Ghost is a live action video game, and it's oh. all of the girls from Host, some really great puppets and stuff. The Jim Henson Creature Shop. I've seen some of, and it's just really really cool. So it's been fun to work with that. Um, always fun getting back with the Host girls. It's just it doesn't feel like work. It almost doesn't feel like we've made another thing because it's just like it's just us hanging out and we've just finished the second block of that. Um, I can't wait to play it. It's so weird that we're going to be in a game. That's like well, so and that's cool. interesting. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that because I think it's real time live uh, start mm -hmm. of the year. So you're actually acting while uh, participants are playing the game. Is that accurate? Yes. So, I, and again, I think you it will only be able you'll only be able to play it at ten p.m. No matter where you are in the world. So that's like interesting. And you have to kind of all play at the same time. And there's a really cool story behind the script. Um, there's a lot of improv again, and there's a lot of silly, funny bits. But um, <laughs> definitely, it's gonna make people jump as well. It's it's a scary one. You talk about improv a lot, and I'm wondering if there's any actors or actresses that you admire or that you favor or try to emulate in your work? Is there anybody that you really look up to? Ooh, I have so many. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm one of those people. I've, I've like not seen nearly enough films for an actor, which is, it's, I always get stiff for it. But um, mm. I guess it's, it's, especially in terms of um, improv, someone like, he, he makes vases. Say. He makes really cool vases and puts them on Twitter all the time. Seth Rogen? Yes. I think he's hilarious, and especially the, the improv stuff that I know he does, and like comedy-wise. Um, I really look up to him. And actually, one day I'd love to be in one of his films. That's like one of my big, one of my big goals, one of my big dreams. Um, Zendaya, I've, I've always looked up to her. I just think she's so cool. Um, and I think there's something really natural about all of her performances, which you don't always, you don't always get that from, you know, people that have come from Disney and stuff. You're, um, you're absolutely right because the Disney Channel or actors or actresses that come out of that um, boot camp, if you will, they tend to be <laughs> kind of elevated and in your face, but you're absolutely right. She does some really grounded work. And of course she appears in the Spider-Man films and also dune i think or do i have that mm. correct okay yes. excellent well this helps me transition to my next question mm. uh if you were to play a comic book character who would you <laughs> all of them all of them all of them <laughs> any of them so <laughs> any any casting directors watching <laughs> i don't know if you've seen on, on twitter this like kind of at one point there was this sort of campaign to get me cast as spider gwen and there was some amazing fan art that was coming out of it and i was like guys keep this going this is so cool and like people editing pictures of my face onto spider gwen and people saying they want to see it i would love i would love to be her because i've had a few auditions for marvel Excellent. and every time i've been like this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. But they've always been for really small parts. So I'm kind of praying it was a situation of you're not going to get these small parts because you're going to get a great part at some point in something huge. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. And obviously my friend Kate just directed the Loki series. So I'm kind of like looking into it like, this is so cool. And like, it really can just happen to anyone. You know, you work hard and, and pitch the right thing. Anything can happen. It's very exciting. I'd love to be a superhero. Well, keep persisting and keep auditioning. I, I, I believe, I trust and believe that you will be in a major role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> okay, so we talked about actors and actresses. Do you have any favorite movies, horror-related or otherwise? Oh, favorite movies. 
Ooh. I'm going to start with horror and I'll say horror related, insidious, the descent. Uh, uh, oh my God, human centipede. Does that qualify as horror? Yes, the human centipede definitely qualifies. And I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you're saying the descent because I think what I appreciate in horror is there seems to be. Um, a lot of female empowerment, especially in host, uh, mm. uh, it's a uh, very uh, female dominated cast as well as the descent. And sometimes uh, we don't see that a lot in motion picture, but mm. with host, the descent, and I think horror allows itself to uh, create a situation where you see strong women in lead roles, uh, final girls, if you will. <gasps> And uh, so I appreciate your mentioning The Descent. Any thoughts regarding that? Oh God, I watched that one when I was so young and it was just one of those films that just stuck in my head. And I was yes. like, this is really, really, really scary. It's really twisted, you know? I think I judge a horror film, especially based on how much I don't want that to be me. <laughs> like, right. if, like I wouldn't want this thing to happen to me in real life, you know? Um, but yeah, it, I agree with you. It's It's really... It's like an amazing showcase because, uh, like you say, even in action and stuff, of course, there's there's female leads, but you don't always get it's so much less frequent. And I think women can really shine in horror when it's done when it's done well. And that's that's one of those one of those films, I think. I think we're moving the needle in that direction. And I think it really starts with these genre genre films because action for so long has been dominated by male lead characters and that gets boring after a while, if you ask me. <laughs> Especially <laughs> no tea, but when it's the same actors. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, there you was know? a period there in the 80s, whatever, and you see the same actors in the same roles or in the same sequels over and over, and it, it does get a bit old after a while. So, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, we're talking deep right now. So, okay, I want to round it <laughs> out with uh, one final question. So right now... Um, Really popular on Netflix, speaking of Netflix and Phil, is a uh, show called Squid Game, which is uh, was filmed in Cor Korea. And I did a little research on you, and I understand uh, you can speak the language. Is that correct? <laughs> so my Korean is, is not great, <laughs> but I can speak Korean. That's kind of... I mean, I, I kind of taught myself... Actually, do you know what? I, this is funny. I went on a date recently and um, we were talking about me speaking Korean and, and he said to me, well, how good are you at Korean? Like Squid Game with no subtitles. And I was like, no, <laughs> definitely not that good. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Like there's there's a bits and pieces I pick up and I'm like, oh, yeah. So and I love um, K-dramas and stuff. And I, I still I've seen the first episode of Squid Game and I haven't seen any more. Well, you and me both. So I, when I finish it, I can have you on again and we can talk about it and dissect <laughs> it if you like. I'll just speak at you in Korean. Well. You can. <laughs> I'd be happy to have you. Well, I know you have to gear up uh, for, you're actually hosting an event tonight where you're uh, doing a rewatch of host with some fellow uh, fans, if you will. So I'm going to let you go and prepare for that, Emma Louise Webb. It has been such Thank a pleasure you. to have you. And also I wanted to mention to our view viewers, uh, support your charity, www.mind.org.uk. Is that correct? Yeah, thank you so much for that little plug. They're such a great charity and um, really big in the UK and really help loads of people. Yes, so, and yeah. again, about mental health awareness and resources. So I appreciate it. And thank you so much for your time. And no, I'm going to stop the recording here. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I've loved this. This is going to be fun now for my live later on. I'm like, uh, <laughs> all right. Until, until next time, maybe we'll see you again. Thank yes. you. Thank you.